so it is famously famous in tamil nadu tamil nadu during the time of pongal jallikattu is held on long scales almost in every village it is being conducted so some animal rights activists argued that jallikattu is violating the rights of the animals and uh, animals are uh, subjected to cruelty and uh, <coughs> punishment so they have argued that so it has to be banned good morning students welcome back to plutus ias so today uh, we are in uh, our 24th day so till now we till now we have covered 23 days so yesterday we have discussed about some important acts related to environment all right so today in accordance with that we are going to discuss the environment related organizations so today we will see some important organizations environment related organizations uh, that are important from the point of view of examination the first one is uh, <coughs> first we will the discuss the ministry itself ministry of forests uh, and ministry of environment forest and climate change so right <coughs> uh, we can say this is the foremost and uh, most important agency or organization uh when it comes to environment so why i have uh, put this ministry also in the organizations because in the prelims there might be a question like this which of the below the question might be like this which of the below agencies are uh, related to which of the below agencies are related are associated with uh conservation of environment or protection of environment options may be like nba national biodiversity authority uh next one is genetic engineering uh, engineering approval committee next one is ministry of environment forest and climate change so generally we tend to uh, ignore this uh, ministry so we will generally go with these two options because they are spe- specific and particular uh, agencies associated with put- protection of environment and biodiversity generally because uh, ministry uh, we tend to ignore this option so don't uh, do that mistakes to make you aware that this organization agency i mean ministry is also uh, one of the important agencies or organizations we can say uh, which works for the protection and the promotion of the environment um, i mean it it is uh, when we talk about the environment and its protection the ministry uh, this particular ministry becomes part and parcel of it so try to remember these tricky areas uh, because in the prelims examination there is a lot of chance that the examiner may confuse you with these kinds of options right so ministry a separate ministry uh, to oversee the environmental aspects that has been created in 1985 its primary mandate is to ensure conservation the conservation of the environment sustainable utilization of natural resources uh and uh, mitigation of climate change impacts so this is the broader mandate of the ministry of environment forest and climate change the key objectives if we see the formulation and implementation of the policies so this is the major objective of the ministry so basically for any ministry the objective will be formulation and implementation of implementation of the policies and acts so when it comes to environment it and its conservation the ministry of environment right the ministry of environment plays the similar role next uh, important aspect is enforcing environmental laws and regulations to protect ecosystems wildlife and the natural resources so this is also one of the other important uh, objective next one is promotion of sustainable development practices so this is also part and parcel of the ministry major objective uh, promoting sustainable developmental practices that balance economic growth with environmental protection next one is uh, addressing climate change climate change challenges through adaptation and mitigation strategies right so this is all these are the some of the uh, major objectives of the ministry so functions and responsibilities similarly we try to understand so conservation and management of forest wildlife and biodiversity monitoring and assessment of environmental pollution and degradation so when it comes to environmental pollution and degradation the ministry has a major responsibility similarly 
facilitating environment clearances yesterday we have understood that there is a eia environmental impact assessment uh, to uh, before starting any particular project so we will assess the impact that uh, the particular project will create and uh, that uh, will ha- that uh, project will have on the environment so to create uh, the, to mitigate the damage that will be done to the environment eia will be conducted so uh, to clear that environmental uh, whatever the i mean decisions are there to clear the pl- projects and uh, so the ministry has the responsibility of uh, facilitating the environmental cre- clearances after ensuring that the damage that is going to be uh, done to the environment through a particular uh, project is limited and not substantial right another important uh, um, uh, responsibility is implementing national and international commitments related to climate change such as paris agreement so it has the uh, responsibility of implementing the commitments given at the international level for example paris agreement another example is kyoto protocol so these kinds of international agreements have to be implemented uh, by the ministry next one is supporting research and development initiative aims at aimed at enhancing environmental sustainability and resilience so these are the responsibilities of the ministry right so after the ministry another important organization when it comes to protection of environment is cpcb uh, central pollution control board so yesterday when we were studying the water act and uh, the air act and also when it comes to the environment protection act epa 1986 we have uh, discussed elaborately about this one central pollution control board so it is the it has the responsibility i mean the cpcb has the mandate of ensuring whatever the rules and regulations are there regulations are there so it has to the cpcb has the responsibility of inter- in a, i mean Uh, implementing the whatever the rules and regulations are prescribed through this act similarly it has the power to enforce the standards that are prescribed under these rules so cpcb when it comes to protection of environment and the prevention of pollution it plays a major role similarly we have state pollution control boards at the state levels this also we have seen yesterday so along with the spcbs and state pollution control boards cpcb plays an important role in uh, all these aspects monitoring regulating and controlling pollution levels across the country if you see the major objectives of cpcb prevent and control pollution of air what air and water resources next one is promote environmental quality standards and guidelines this is also another responsibility next one is facilitate research and development activities related to pollution control technologies so it has to facilitate the research and the developmental te- uh, development of technologies technologies which help in control control the pollution similarly another objective is enforce environmental laws regulations pertaining to pollution control so these are the objectives of the central pollution control board next one is another very very important uh, uh, agency or organization animal welfare board of india aw uh, awbi so this is very very important so this organization will be in news whenever we uh, talk about the cruelty to animals cruelty to animals right so basically this organization has been created to ensure that there is no cruelty to animals right to ensure that there is no harm done to animals there is no cruelty towards animals this uh, organization has been created it is the responsibility of animal welfare board of india to ensure that there is no cruelty towards the animals so basically we can take the uh, inspiration for this board from dpsp when we were studying the dpsp uh there is a provision uh, added through the 42nd amend- uh, amendment act that so the state should in- make sure that environment environment is p- protected along with the wildlife wildlife and even forest 
so taking uh, taking the spirit from here the government has created this one similarly in uh, fundamental duties also fundamental duties also when we were studying the fundamental duties we have seen that uh, one should adopt uh, one should act in a compassionate manner comp- compassionate manner towards animals so to fulfill we can trace the spirit of creating this board from these two aspects di- directive principles of state policy and fundamental duties so so the legal mandate where the creation of uh, i mean from where the legal mandate for creation of this board has come uh, is the act the prevention of cruelty to animals act of 1960 so basically we can say the uh, source for this act is dpsp as we have discussed earlier and fundamental duties this particular act has been created prevention of cruelty to animals act and uh, <coughs> the act provided for the establishment of national welfare board of india so the mandate of the board is preventing cru- cruelty towards the animals and uh, promoting their welfare so basically it should create cruelty towards animals and it's promote the welfare of the animals all right so the primary objective uh, of the this board is prevent mistreatment of animals right <coughs> it also includes i mean uh, in the i mean in the uh, kind of mission of protecting and uh, preventing mistreatment of animals it uh, includes i mean the board initiates formulation of policies conducting research and uh, raising awareness about ethical treatment for the animals right when we see the organizational structure of this body so it operates under the ministry of fisheries animal husbandry and dairying so it works under this particular ministry so generally this board is comprised of experts experts from various fields such as veterinary science animal welfare organizations and government representatives so in this way there is a blend of diverse talent diverse knowledge in this particular board so if we see the functions and the responsibilities of this board enforcing laws related to animal welfare similarly formulating guidelines and standards for ethical treatment of animals just now we have seen conducting research to enhance understanding of animal welfare issues similarly collaborating with stakeholders for uh, for better implementation of animal related laws and uh, promotion of animal uh, sorry promotion of awareness cam- campaigns so that people are not uh, can say not mistreating the animals so generally the animal welfare board of india this will be in news whenever there is a cruelty i mean news about cruelty to animals so this uh, particular body came into news when there was uh, uh, news around jallikattu so uh, <coughs> it has been held that some organizations or we can say some annual uh, related activists uh, they have argued that this jallikattu is mistreating the animals and uh, in that process uh, it is an animal sport we can say animal sport so it is famously famous in tamil nadu tamil nadu during the time of pongal jallikattu is held on long scales almost in every village it is being conducted so some animal rights activists argued that jallikattu is violating the rights of the animals and uh, animals are uh, subjected to cruelty and uh, <coughs> punishment so they have argued that so it has to be banned and uh, the case uh, even went to the supreme court of india also uh, so there was a lot of hue and cry about the jallikattu so at that time the animal welfare board of india also a major stakeholder right was a major stakeholder in this aspect right similarly similar to jallikattu there are other aspects also the jallikattu basically belongs to tamil nadu similarly there are cock fights these are conducted in andhra pradesh so they are these are very much famous in the coastal uh, districts of andhra pradesh so these are also conducted generally during the pongal time similarly there are kambala race kambala race these are uh, famous in karnataka 
right so try to remember the animal sport and uh, related sta uh, state also there may be a question from this area also so whenever uh, it is uh, the animal rights activists argue that so through this uh, we can say uh, animal sports the uh, animals are subjected to cruelty so at that time the animal welfare board of india which has the responsibility of preventing cruelty to the animals it becomes a major uh, stakeholder when it comes to jellikattu animal welfare board of india <coughs> it advocated for uh, we can say the banning the jellikattu so it was a major stakeholder in this particular issue right next one is national biodiversity authority right <coughs> So when we were yesterday, when we were studying the National Biodiversity Act, two thousand two, so uh, it's uh, we have also understood the importance of this particular act, National Biodiversity Authority, in uh, protecting the biodiversity and uh, <coughs> equitable sharing of the benefits arising out of utilization of biodiversity resources. Uh, so this act plays an important role. So through this act only, Biological Diversity Act of two thousand two. the national biodiversity authority has been created to whatever the mechanisms that have been established through this particular act so this body is responsible for implementing and overseeing the uh, whatever the provisions and the mechanisms created by this particular act so it is the national biodiversity authority is the apex body for biodiversity conservation in the country so it pl plays a pivotal role in regulating access to biological resources and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the utilization of biodiversity resources the major objectives of the uh, national biodiversity authority are conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity so we have already discussed this so one of the major objectives of this authority is conservation and sustainable use of biological diversity next is regulation of access to biological resources and associated traditional knowledge next is facilitation of fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the use of biological resources so yesterday i gave uh, an example because in india the example was like in india so the indigenous people the tribal people know many medicinal plants right so medicinal plants and many other practices they are uh, they have the knowledge of these practices they are using them throughout the ages so now private companies are trying to uh, uh, use this knowledge and create modern medicines so in this way they are utilizing the knowledge possessed by these indigenous people so in that case the the npa should uh, has to make sure that so the benefits arising out of those modern medicines they have to be profits have to be shared in proper proportion with the indigenous people who were actually possessing that particular knowledge so this is the responsibility of national biodiversity authority right so some of the functions and responsibilities of this body is granting approvals for accessing biological resources for research and commercial purposes so uh, just now i have discussed so the tribal people indigenous people have the knowledge of some medicinal plants so whenever any organization or private company uh, is trying to utilize that uh, knowledge or resource so it has the power the national biodiversity authority has the responsibility or power to grant the the uh, license or the grant the permission so in cases where it feels that it is not uh, the knowledge sharing is not safe for the indigenous people it uh, restrain it can restrain from granting that permission right next is another responsibility is promotion of biodiversity conservation so one of the major responsibility of, responsibility of this organization is promotion of biodiversity and uh, conserving biodiversity next is facilitating the implementation of access and benefit sharing agreements so whenever a private company is utilizing the knowledge possessed by indi uh, indigenous people there should be a agreement there should be an agreement knowledge sharing agreement so nba national biodiversity authority should make sure that it is facilitating the uh, implementation of that uh, we can say agreement 
so it makes sure that the pro- agreement is properly implemented next is conducting awareness programs about the importance of protecting biodiversity right if we understand the structure of the nba so it works under the ministry of environment forest and climate change uh, it also consists of members with expertise so it the body also consists of experts from diverse fields experts from diverse domains like biodiversity conservation traditional knowledge legal affairs and related fields so the members are coming from diverse fields of expertise next one is uh, wildlife trust of india so this is not a government body this is a civil society organization or we can say in popular language it is a non governmental organization it is an ngo so <coughs> it is dedicated to protection and the preservation of india's wildlife and habitats so the major objective of this organization is protection and preservation of india's wildlife and india's habitats so it is founded in 98 1998 by enthusiast of wildlife right so the mission and objectives of wildlife trust of india is its mission is to safeguard india's biodiversity through innovative conservation conservation initiatives right the mission is to safeguard india's biodiversity through innovative conservation initiatives scientific research and a community engagement so its objectives include protecting endangered species so we have discussed previously the endangered species we have seen different species so one of the important objectives of this wildlife trust of india is to protect those indigenous species uh, similarly conserving critical habitat so we have also understood that uh, the major reason for the species being endangered or critically in- endangered is their habitat loss habitat destruction so the organization fo- also focuses on conserving critical habitats which are critical for survival of this particular species next promotion of harmonious coexistence between humans and wildlife so organization this organization advocates for harmonious existence of humans and wildlife so key initiatives of this organization are so it implements a range of conservation projects focused on species recovery so species recovery is uh whenever a species is critically endangered and their numbers are uh increasingly declining i mean their number is rapidly declining rapidly declining so <coughs> this uh, organization focuses on uh, recovering those species so recovering through the, we can say the uh, we can say through botanical gardens botanical gardens or through breeding centers artificial breeding centers so many other technologies are there so through these all through these efforts the critically endangered or for that matter the extinct species can be recovered so the organization takes up those projects right similarly it conducts scientific research to better understand wildlife populations their habitats and the threats they face so once we know all these things we can better protect the wildlife another one is it involved in wildlife rescue and rehabilitation efforts so we as uh, we all know the wildlife is subjected to increasingly subjected to poaching and also trafficking so this organization participates in participates uh, participate in wildlife rescue and rehabilitation measures right next is community based conservation initiatives so organization uh, initiated the community uh, based conservation initiatives so we have understood when we were studying the uh, environment related aspects so we have understood that the community local community local community plays an important role in the measures in the conservation measures conservation measures so throughout the ages throughout the ages they were protecting and they were living harmoniously with the environment so 
this organization uh, realizes that importance importance of the community and taking community based conservation measures for protection of wildlife and biodiversity next one is uh, world wildlife fund of india so it is also a non governmental organization it is uh, known for working towards preservation of india's natural heritage and biodiversity so basically ww uh, wwf it is an international organization it has in a chapter separate chapter for india it is known as wwf india so <coughs> right it focuses on addressing key conservation challenges through science based solutions and also through policy advocacy and the community engagement right if we understand the mission and objectives of this organization so its mission is to stop the degradation of planet's natural environment so this is its major objective and also build a future where pe- people live in harmony with the nature right so its objectives other objectives include conserving critical ecosystems protecting endangered species promoting sustainable development practices these are the important measures of this organization key initiatives if we see were some of the measures initiated by this organization conservation of priority landscapes and species so priority landscapes and species are the important species like tiger elephant etc and also protecting the the respective habitations where the particular wildlife is residing right so some of the uh, it's focused on protecting some of the iconic species such as tiger elephant rhinoceros and marine turtles similarly another program is sustainable livelihoods and natural resource management so we can understand this is also very very important for conservation of biodiversity and environment so it focusing it is focusing on sustainable livelihoods and the natural resource management right next is climate mitigation and adaptation climate change mitigation and adaptation so as we all know climate change climate change is the biggest threat that is that humanity humanity is facing so we should uh, create mechanisms to mitigate the impact of climate change so climate change is a reality we have to accept that and we have to try and mitigate the impacts of the climate change and also we have to adapt to the climate changes so this organization also focus on those areas next is environmental education and awareness so it uh, increasingly involves in educating the people and creating awareness about the environment and the biodiversity right so these are some of the key initiatives of wwf india next is bombay natural history society so it is the india's oldest and the most respected organizations dedicated to study and the conservation of biodiversity so it is founded in 1883 <coughs> it has been forefront in wildlife research conservation and education it playing a critical role in india india's conservation landscape so its mission is to promote the conservation of india's natural heritage through scientific research habitat conservation and environmental uh, education right so some of the initiatives taken by bombay natural history society is biodiversity research and monitoring so it conducts scientific research to study india's diverse flora and fauna monitoring changes uh, in biodiversity and identifying priority areas for conservation next is habitat conservation and restoration so we have understood that habitat plays a criti- critical role in conserving wildlife so the uh, bnhs focuses on habitat conservation and uh, restoration next is species conservation and uh, recovery so the organization also focuses on species conservation which are facing uh, threats and which are at the verge of uh, end, uh, uh, at the verge of uh, extinct so the organization focus on focus, the organization focuses on uh, species conservation these species conservation and uh, recovery 
try to uh, tries to recover those uh, species next one is environmental education and uh, capacity building so this is also important uh, initiative taken by this organization so it conducts educational programs workshops and uh, training sessions to engage and empower individuals communities and uh, stakeholders in conservation efforts so these are the measures taken by this organization next important organization is uh, national ganga river basin authority right so <coughs> it is a government body created under the government so it is established in 2009 uh, with the aim of overseeing the rejuvenation and the conservation of the ganga river and its basin so as we all know ganga is one of the most polluted rivers in india most polluted rivers in india uh, so there are uh, many efforts towards rejuvenating and uh, purifying uh, the river ganga treating the river ganga but uh, the efforts have not been successful and also there is a duplication of efforts i mean many organizations are trying from many sides to clean ganga so <coughs> it is not working so to coordinate the activities of cleaning and rejuvenating the uh, ganga river the national ganga river basin authority has been created in 2009 right so it is uh, operating under the ministry of jal shakti right it is tasked with formulating and implementing policies strategies and programs to address various challenges facing uh that are faced by river ganga and its ecosystem objectives of the uh, this authority are restore and maintain the ecological integrity of the ganga river and its basin also so it uh, it involves not only uh, cleaning the ganga but also restoring the the basin of the ganga river next is improve water quality biodiversity and overall health of the river system also promote sustainable development practices and ensure scientific use of sorry efficient use of water resources within the ganga river basin also enhance public awareness and the stakeholder participation in cleaning and rejuvenating ganga the some of the key initiatives taken by the the authority national ganga river basin authority are pollution control and abatement so it is fighting the control uh, fighting the pollution and it is trying to contain it so whatever the drains that are draining into the ganga river now uh, sewerage so sewerage is a major problem sewerage that is directly being released into the river ganga and for that matter to into the most of the rivers so many sewerage treatment plants sewerage treatment plants have been built and uh, water sewerage water is being released into the ganga river after only after it is uh, being treated properly next is river front development so it is also making efforts to develop the ganga river front next one is biodiversity conservation so the authority is trying to conserve the biodiversity that is associated with the ganga river and also all the biodiversity that is thriving uh, in the basin of the ganga river next one is community engagement and a stakeholder participation so we have understood that to conserve uh, any ecosystem including the river ecosystem so the community plays an important role community plays an important role so it uh, make it is making efforts to uh, engage the community in preservation of ganga and also it is ensuring the uh, that all the stakeholders are made part of the conservation efforts next one is another important organization national tiger conservation authority it is also a statutory body created by the government itself uh, it is established in 2005 under the wildlife protection act of 1972 so remember wildlife protection act of 
इट इज दोर्स फॉर क्रिएटिंग दिस अथॉरिटी नेशनल टाइगर कंजर्वेशन अथॉरिटी सो इट इज ऑपरेटिंग अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एनवायरमेंट फॉरेस्ट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज इट इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर कोऑर्डिनेटिंग टाइगर टाइगर कंजर्वेशन एफर्ट्स इन इंडिया सो अर्लियर वी हैव सीन दैट देर आर मेनी इनिशिएटिव फॉर कंजर्वेशन ऑफ गंगा सिमिलरली देर आर एफर्ट्स फ्रॉम मेनी एरियाज टू कंजर्व द टाइगर ऑल्सो बिकॉज टाइगर इज ऑल्सो फेसिंग लॉट ऑफ थ्रेट्स एंड इट इज गोइंग टूवर्ड्स आई मीन इट इज फेसिंग लॉट ऑफ थ्रेट्स सो देर आर मेनी एफर्ट्स टू प्रोटेक्ट द टाइगर सो दिस एजेंसी दिस अथॉरिटी ट्राइज टू कोऑर्डिनेट ऑल द एफर्ट्स मेड बाई ऑल द स्टेक होल्डर्स सम ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आर provide statutory authority for tiger conservation in india india so it provides a statutory authority for conservation of tigers in india also to implement policies strategies for protection and management of tiger reserves so it uh, <coughs> gives policies it uh, uh, ensures that policies and strategies are implemented properly for uh, efficient management of tiger reserves similarly monitor and assess populations habitats and the threats to tigers so these are some of the objectives of the national tiger conservation authority some of the initiatives taken by this organization are tiger reserve management so as we all know there are reserves for tigers including national parks so uh, the uh, it uh, the initiatives of the national tiger conservation authority are one of the initiatives are uh, tiger reserve management so it ensures that tiger reserves are properly managed next is anti poaching measures so the one of the major threats faced by tigers in india are poaching illegal poaching and also trafficking of uh, tiger body parts so the organization try uh, organization tries to uh, prevent poaching next is habitat conservation and landscape management so the organization al- also tries to protect the habitat tiger habitat and it takes up landscape management initiatives for better protection of tigers in india next is community engagement and livelihood support so basically uh, the organization tries to uh, save the tigers or protect tigers by making community as a part and parcel of it as a part of it so when there is alternative livelihood for local community people so they uh, do not harm the tigers or they do not increasingly venture into the tiger habitat so one of this is also one of the key initiatives of this organization right these are some of the important aspects about the national tiger conservation authority right these are some of the organizations which i thought were important from the point of view of examination so there are many other some more organizations which are important from exam point of view so from your side you try to uh, know some information about the other organization also so for example project tiger is there the so project elephant is there so you try to uh, know some information about these organizations also right now we will see some questions that are being asked from this area uh, previously in the examination so first question uh the question is consider the following statements statement 1 is animal welfare board of india is established under environment protection act of 1986 this is the first statement next one is national tiger conservation authority is uh, a statutory authority Nation, third one is national ganga river basin authority is uh, chaired by the prime minister so here we have studied about animal welfare board of india it is established under not under environment protection act it is established under the prevention of cruelty to animals act so 1960 we have studied about this one uh, just before so this statement is incorrect it is established under the animal welfare uh, sorry prevention of cruelty to animals act not the environmental 
police protection act right national uh, tiger conservation authority is a statutory body yes this is created under the government and uh, it is a statutory body because it is created through a law right so second statement is correct right third one is national ganga river basin authority is uh, checked by the prime minister yes this statement is also correct so the prime minister is the ex officio ex officio chairman of the national ganga river basin authority so the correct uh, correct option is option b statements 2 and 3 are correct right so next question uh, it is asked in 2012 uh, the question is how does national biodiversity authority help in protecting india's uh, protecting the indian agriculture so options are nbhx biopiracy and protects the indigenous and the traditional genetic resources second statement national biodiversity authority directly monitors and supervises the scientific research on genetic modification of crop plants third statement is application of intellectual property rights related to genetic or biological resources cannot be made without the approval of the nba so these are the three statements so statement 1 is correct national uh, the nba checks the biopiracy and protects the indigenous and the traditional genetic resources so i have given the examples of traditional medicinal practices and the traditional med- medical plants and the knowledge possessed by the indigenous people so nba protects uh, this uh, these uh, the traditional and indigenous knowledge and it checks the biopiracy piracy and stealing of this knowledge so uh, so statement 1 is correct uh, in second statement is incorrect nba directly monitors super, uh, and supervises the scientific research and the genetic modification of crop plants so this is an incorrect statement because there is another body genetic engineering approval or uh, advisory committee so genetic engineering ap- <coughs> appraisal committee is there so it has the responsibility of uh, monitoring the scientific research on genetic modification of crop plants so it is not the responsibility of nba third option is also correct application of intellectual property rights related to genetic or biological resources cannot be made without the approval of nba so this statement is correct we have studied it so uh, statements 1 and 3 are correct so the correct option is c right so these are the some of the questions asked from this area right uh, this is it for today thank you thank you for joining the class so see you next time until then have a good day mm-hmm.